One of the most common diseases we see in cats is called FIP or feline infectious peritonitis. Feline infectious peritonitis is caused by the feline coronavirus, um, so a coronavirus specific to cats, um, and it's most common in younger cats, usually less than a year of age, and oftentimes in cats who are around multiple cats, so from catteries or shelters. And lots of cats actually carry feline coronavirus, but we don't know why in some cats it mutates to a more aggressive form that causes FIP. Um, FIP can affect many body systems. Obviously, the neurologic system is one of them, and it'll most commonly affect the brain. When FIP affects the brain, it can cause a number of different symptoms. Some of the most common things that we see are things like dizziness, loss of balance, loss of vision, sometimes seizures. Um, and oftentimes the cats feel very lethargic, sometimes nauseated or inappetent, um, and they're just not quite acting themselves. Um, sometimes we'll even see things like nystagmus or abnormal eye movements, um, all pointing to a problem affecting different parts of the brain. FIP can be difficult to diagnose in cats. Um, oftentimes things like blood tests aren't very rewarding, and sometimes the blood tests can't tell the difference between the more common form of feline coronavirus and the mutated, more aggressive form that causes FIP. In neurology, one of the tests that we use is an MRI scan and, and a spinal fluid analysis, and there are pretty specific findings on an MRI that can indicate FIP, at least sometimes to the best of our ability. Um, some of the things that we'll see on an MRI are really enlarged ventricles or the fluid reservoirs that hold the spinal fluid in the brain. Um, we'll see inflammation of the linings of those ventricles or the ependema. And then sometimes we'll see contrast enhancement of the ependema as well, which is again the lining of the ventricles. When we pair the MRI scan with a spinal fluid analysis, we'll often see types of cells called neutrophils in the spinal fluid and a really high protein content in the spinal fluid. Um, and even though that's not a definitive diagnosis for FIP, it's really suggestive of that. Sometimes blood work will also help us. We'll see things like elevated globulins, but the specific infectious disease tests for FIP are not often rewarding um, and are sometimes difficult to interpret. There aren't many good treatments for FIP currently. Um, oftentimes we'll use immunosuppressive medications because there's a theory that the immune system is responsible for that transformation of the coronavirus within a cat's body. There is a new experimental treatment that's out. It's not unfortunately approved by the FDA yet, um, but there have been some studies through universities that have shown really good promise because previously the outcome for cats with FIP was very poor. Most of them will succumb to the disease. Um, but some of the newer treatments are showing um, some improvement and sometimes even what we suspect to be a cure. However, we don't have long-term studies yet that tell us what will happen you know, years down the line for cats treated with um, these medications. So hopefully one day we'll be able to treat or even cure the disease. Um, currently, I use steroids to help reduce inflammation in the brain and there have been a few cases where I've also used some other immunosuppressive medications. Um, and some cats have, have a good outcome with those treatments alone. I do have one cat who is um, eight months post-diagnosis and doing great. Um, so it's not impossible to treat. It can be really difficult to treat though. We also want, you know, want to have supportive care for these kitties. So making sure that they're getting appropriate nutrition and fluids. Um, you know, so sometimes giving them an appetite stimulant or fluids underneath the skin can be really helpful to make them feel better. Um, and sometimes that can even just spark a little bit of recovery as well. If your cat starts exhibiting a loss of balance, incoordination, blindness, seizures, or any other concerning signs, we recommend that you contact your local veterinary neurologist as soon as possible. Quick intervention can often make the difference between a good and a poor outcome, um, and we wanna make sure that we can evaluate your pet and determine the possible causes for the signs as soon as possible so that we can provide the appropriate treatment as soon as possible as well.